Hello, hello. Welcome back to The Sweet Spot. This week's interview is with Melanie Deerdorf, a good friend of mine and fellow marketer. Melanie is a seasoned marketer and an AI enthusiast working with both B2B and B2C companies on everything from marketing strategy to lead generation, content development, event support, and social and email marketing. She enjoys the variety of her clients, which range from a soy candle startup to a 100-year-old university, a 401k services firm, a labeling machine manufacturer, and a commercial architect. A Phoenix resident since 2017, Melanie is a former Missourian who still gets excited about marketing after nearly three decades. She's active on LinkedIn and Instagram under the name Melanie the Marketer and has a soft spot for coffee, Coke Zero, and catching typos on TV. I hope you enjoy the episode. Welcome to the Small Business Sweet Spot. I'm Barb Davids, and I'm here to help you get more website traffic and leads with simple, actionable SEO and content strategies. In each episode, I share tips and tactics and talk with other business owners who help us grow both in our business and in life. I'm so glad you're here. Let's go. Thanks for sitting with me today, Melanie, and we are going to talk about AI. So thank you. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you have some really great insight. And there's a whole bunch of discussion around how it can be used, how it should be used, giving examples, what's right, what's wrong. And I like your perspective on how you're looking at it because you've been diving into it more and more. So maybe we can start with how how you're using it in your business. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm using it in so many different ways. I started using it maybe almost a year ago, not the earliest of adopters, but I still feel like I, I was one of the few few of my peers that were you know using AI already. So I started out with some simple things. I had listened to a podcast or two or read an article about you know different ways to use it. So I started out probably doing simple things like checking a, pair, a social media paragraph copy that I wrote to see if there were any um, edits that needed to be made, either grammar or typos. So I started using simple things like that. And then over time, I started using it for um, other kind of, I guess you could say, time-saving things like here's a list of bullets, reorder them in alphabetical order. And so I would use it for basic like things like that, but then it wasn't too long where I started using it for harder things. At least for me, they seemed like they were more advanced where I would, my prompt would include, you know, the, what I was working on, like a blog post about X, Y, Z topic. And if I wasn't as familiar with it, I might say, what are the six to seven points in an article like this that I should include? And I would say, I would always, you know, preface it by saying I'm writing this for this certain type of client, you know, trying to get it, the, give it the best information I could to set up my prompt. And so, yeah, I've used it. I use it daily. I use it on my phone. I use it on the desktop. I do, you know, personal, per, excuse me, personal things for, you know, where I'm asking questions and then many, many, many business things. Okay. And do you use a particular one? I started out using chat GPT okay. and then I switched over to one that's called, I think it's pronounced Magi or Magi. It's M-A-G-A-I.co. I uh, heard it on a, about it on a podcast and it incorporates a bunch of AI GPTs like chat GPT, Gemini, Claude, has some, a lot of image creating ones. And so, yeah, I started using that. I don't know. I, I thought the, the gentleman that started the company sounded interesting. And I liked the idea of having multiple to choose from just on one application. Mm-hmm. And also it had a way of storing things that look to be more user-friendly than, than chat GPT. Yeah. So I've been using it maybe four or five months now. And I like it a lot. It's like $19.99 a month. So it's affordable. Yeah. That's one thing I don't like about chat GPT, which I've renamed Chad because I'm just tired <laughs> of saying chat GPT. But like the the maintenance of all of the threads, I guess, are really mm-hmm. starting to annoy me because I, I do put bullets or emojis as the names of some of them. So I know where they are. But then going back and remembering to delete like temporary things is mm-hmm. getting to be harder and you have to do each one individually, which is kind of goofy. But another um, thing I like about it is you it has some pre-built personas in there where it's mm-hmm. like one is a marketing expert, one is a business advisor, things like that. So when I remember to change it from the default, which is just assistant, I like experimenting with those personas to see. And I've never really compared like, oh, I use the basic assistant for this query. And then I switched to marketing expert and I use this query. 
usually just because I don't like to take the time to do that, but I never did a comparison, but I believe that the pre-built personas were created with some thought. And so often I try to remember to change that toggle from the default to the pre-built persona. Okay. Yeah. I think I used it a while back when it was first out and I Mm -hmm. didn't quite know how to use it. And I think that was part of my problem because I didn't realize how much I needed to like, tra- well, can, do you still need to train that one too, even? You, yes, you can do your own. If you mean like create your own persona, you can definitely train it on on your client, I suppose, or on yourself, how you like to write. I haven't taken the time to do that, um, but I should. <laughs> yeah. Right now I'm just using some of the pre-built features because those seem to to get the result I want. Yeah, okay. And then um, have you tried any others? Or did you just kind of stop with that one? I tried a few outside of it. I think, oh, I, I really liked Microsoft Copilot, or I guess it used to be called Bing Copilot. Maybe it's just Copilot now. I liked it a lot. And occasionally I'll pull it up really quickly if I want to do some sort of comparison. So that that's a big favorite of mine. I would say that's the one that and chat GPT are the ones that I use most consistently over the last year, except for this newer, newer experiment the last few months. Okay. And then, so when you say it uses the different chat GPTs or GPTs, do you automatically have to tell it which one to use or does it just yes. do it in the background? No, it, it gives you a bunch to choose from. It defaults to chat GPT, but okay. then you can scroll down alphabetically and it includes uh, several versions of Gemini and Claude, you know, Claude, different names. And and I haven't memorized them all, but I know that a couple of those. So so I usually just pick one of those if I want something different. But honestly, I probably stick with chat GPT a lot. Yeah. Um, I've heard different things about how certain ones are better with advanced writing, but I'm so comfortable using the tool now that almost out of the box, it's easy enough for me because I've learned over time that the better prompts that you give it the better your results. And it's never a one and done thing. Maybe if it's check a typo, that's usually a one and done query. But if it's something where I want to have a conversation back and forth with it and tweak things and give it more information, then that's, you know, that's what I, uh, that's what I do. I, I know sometimes people say they've tried it and they think that it's hard or it doesn't give them what they want, but it's sort of the quality in quality out thing. Mm-hmm. And so I think the more people are comfortable using it, the more you'll see that by correcting it in a way to give you a different kind of an output or even saying from the start, <laughs> one of the things, one of the things the tool does a lot, I guess it's chat GPT, perhaps all of them is it starts a paragraph or say like, if I want to intro to a blog post and I set it all up, you know, I say what I want to have done it. And it always starts with a prepositional phrase, like in today's data driven world or in today's fast paced world, comma. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so, and I've seen it so much that I'm like, you know, if I think about it in advance, I'll say, don't start this with a prepositional phrase such as in today's blah, blah world. Yeah. I don't always remember that. But as soon as I see the output, I chuckle and I'm like, okay, I'll ask it for a different intro. Yeah. And it it does it. So it yeah. just seems to default to that. Yeah. I do feel like the the Chad taking my certain information and saying, don't use this word, do use that word. And that kind of thing, it's starting to remember more. Mm-hmm. Like in the beginning, like just even a couple months ago, I would get so frustrated because I'd be like, don't use this word or don't start with this. And it would still do it. I'm like, did you not hear me? It's it's typed right there. <laughs> <laughs> but I've heard different uh, things about the short and long-term memory capabilities. And I don't know exactly how these things are are wired, but you know, sometimes I'll hear that their long-term memory is better than their short or vice versa. And so if I'm using the same thread, I kind of feel like I get better results. That's why I like going back in in Magi or Magi to 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 find a thread. Now I'm not doing I'm not doing a great job of tagging those so I can remember it actually lets you create folders and drag them over, but okay. I have to be in the right mindset to like ask a query and immediately file it. Yeah. And that's a part of it I haven't tried yet. Okay. Um, but I do often recognize the keywords, you know, when I look at my chat history and I'm like, oh, I'm looking for this one. I wish there was an overall search thing where you could search for a phrase or something to jump to that. But I haven't figured that out yet. I don't know if you have, but where you could type in some keywords and go right to it. I don't think it has that kind of search in the history. So, 
I wonder if you can create a custom GPT to go do that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> I did create a custom GPT for my own stuff, finally, mm -hmm. because I got tired of retyping it. And I didn't make it public or anything yet, but I might make it later. But basically, it just takes... So my process is I have the copywriter who writes the blog post. And then mm -hmm. from the blog post that's written by a human, I take that and then create my podcast episode usually now. And mm -hmm. then I rewrite write it or re-say it because I don't read directly from the blog post. And plus, when you say it out loud, it is a little bit different. So plus, my mood is different all the time. So depending on what I want to add or take away. And then I say, OK, take my script that mm -hmm. I've tweaked from my own copy. And then I put it in there and say, create a blog post from it. So mm -hmm. that way, when I put it on the episode page, it is still it's it's still very short and concise, but it's not quite the transcript, which is really always hard to read by itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I've definitely used it a lot to take, say, like one of my clients, I worked with them on, I think it was eight informational sheets, two page documents that took quite a few weeks to put together because I had to speak with the subject matter expert. And so these things were all done complete. They were on a PDF. Well, you can't drop a PDF in. It can't read that. So I would copy and paste the PDF mm -hmm. into chat. And I would say, I would say that I wanted a social media post for it or a blog post. And so I would give it information to summarize and kind of like what you're talking about. And so that's helped me a lot. Yeah. Do you, so what's your approach on, do you disclose using AI in anything that you use, either emails, website, clients, like what does that look like for you? Yeah, I, I over the last year, I have become more, I guess you could say comfortable, but also figured out some good ways to work it into the conversation. Like I had a, a time where a client came to me for a really quick request, kind of out of the blue to uh, update his LinkedIn bio. I post occasionally on his account for him. So he knew I had access and he wanted me to look at his about bio uh, on his LinkedIn profile and update it. And so it, it was kind of a rush request and I had been using chat GPT for a while. And so I put, I did not put the old copy in there. I don't believe it's been a few months, but I, I took the about page on his website that had his information and I added a couple more things just to see what it would do. And it definitely pumped out a, a, a complete sounding about page. And, but I immediately noticed like a problem or two with it. Like it had his college wrong and I knew what it was. Uh, and so it also had years of experience wrong. And I had just worked on a 25 year anniversary blog post for this client. And so that was like, oh, that's weird. But then I liked some things about it, but I felt like I had to fact check it. And so not that I had to fill him in all this, on all the sausage making, but because I gave it back to him quickly, pretty quickly, let's say within a few hours, uh, and that was just because my day was busy, I told him that that I had used AI. And I said, I don't know if you've ever used AI or not, but I used it for your bio just to put something together for you quickly. And, you know, I don't think he said anything back to me on it. It was kind of like it went over his head and I sort of made a mental note like, oh, I need to ask him what, you know, he really just wanted like the thing and he liked it and he added it to his profile. I guess I could have, but I think he ended up adding it himself. And so in that instance, I just kind of casually mentioned it in the email for my one client that I mentioned a few minutes ago that where I did those big informational sheets for a lot of their services, they do some consulting about AI, more so AI governance, like how you govern the data in AI models. And so with them, it was easier to mention, but, and I have brought it up two or three times over the last year, but they never seemed to say too much about it. I had a really hard blog post that I had to write for them a year ago. I remember it was like last November and it was a topic I, I had worked with this client for eight and a half years and it was a topic that I had never written about before. So I made a point of telling them that I leaned heavily on AI for that because I didn't have a lot of access to the subject matter expert for this blog topic. And I made some assumptions and I used AI I just kind of helped walk. It wasn't like I got a complete blog post when I did my query, but I would ask it things like, if you were this type of a client, a business buyer of these type of services, what would be some of the things you would be interested in knowing? And so I just 
it was very painstaking, but <laughs> and painful in a way because I felt like I didn't know enough about the topic. But I did have a lot of deep knowledge of the company. And so between what I got from AI and what I knew from my client, including, let's say, their style of content, but also what they call out as their differentiators, I was able to craft something, you know, me and AI going back and forth. And it turned out fine. And I think they had a few, half a dozen or more changes, but nothing that made me think like, wow, AI really got that wrong. I figured, you know, it's a tech, it was a tech technology type of an article, I guess you could say, data related. And I was thinking, gosh, you would think with AI being a tech thing, it should know, right? I mean, kind of silly, but I was like, oh, I bet this is going to be really good to use. So, so yeah, I went back and forth quite a bit, but at the end of the day, they they liked the article and I felt like, yay, success. Yeah. Do you, for any of your clients, have they required any changes in their legalese anywhere for this stuff now? No, that one client I just mentioned, they they are talking about a policy for their employees about how they want employees to use it. Now I'm a contractor or I'm a, you know, I'm a vendor for them and I have some legal requirements as far as just our contract that we have, but they seem more concerned about how their proprietary proprietary information might be uploaded and saved. But when I use it, sometimes I, for any of my clients, I have occasionally said, like, instead of saying an Atlanta-based architecture firm named my client's name, I would say generically, if, I might say Atlanta, but I would say a commercial architecture firm in Atlanta. I'm writing this for this client, client or for my data management consulting firm client that I've had forever. I but now I but now I say their name. You know, with those informational sheets that I mentioned, those are all on their website. We've used them in outbound marketing things like email newsletters and link to them on the blog. So I don't have any fear of uploading that information, even though it might be considered proprietary. They don't have pricing in there or anything. And mm. so it'll be interesting when this company comes up with guidelines. Perhaps I will change what I do. But right now I feel like I'm using it smartly. And also, um, you know, so I'm not concerned about that. I just know that they want to have a policy. Yeah. there's. I saw a couple articles about companies saying they use AI, but the general consensus is, or at least one survey, right? We all know what that means. There's one survey that was skewed in some way, some fashion for whoever was creating the yes. survey. <laughs> but it did say something interesting to to talk about that if you mention AI as using that in your product or service or that it was AI generated or the product was created with AI or so, anything remotely created with the words AI in it, that does turn some people off. What are your mm. thoughts about that? Well, if if that's happening, I think that's because it's there's you know still a lot of people that still need to 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 experiment it with it and use it. I don't think people will have that kind of concern down the road. I see a lot of companies kind of doing the opposite thing. It's tool, they might be tools that I've used forever or platforms that I've heard of, and and now they they mention AI more, and they've probably had this functionality for a while because AI isn't new, machine learning isn't new. It's just the generative you know AI aspect that we're seeing that's available to every person with a computer or a phone. That's that's newer, but I think a lot of companies are doing the opposite. They're like, oh, we've always had AI or we're AI enabled. So I think that also probably helps consumers be more comfortable if they have a tool that they use. Like I was on a MailChimp uh, webinar a week or so ago, and they mentioned one of their you know AI features that they had. And so to me, it's it's getting mainstream. And so I haven't really had anyone say, don't use it. Mm -hmm. If they did, I would probably ask them why, like, oh, why do you say that? Or if they ask me, you know, that's what really haven't had anyone ask me, but I have brought it up in conversation to to maybe test the waters a little. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's a tool that many people who do what I do are using. And so I've kind of forgotten that for some people, it might be something that concerns them. But yeah. I've imagined if somebody asked me something about it, you know, yeah. like, well, how do you make sure or what do you... Is there any risk? And and so I have some answers in my head, but I haven't really had to put them into practice. Mm -hmm. I just I just know that from talking with other marketers and writers, I can still see some reluctance 
especially early on, I would hear people say like, oh, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to use that. Yeah. So, so I'm hearing less of it, but for my clients, it's almost been like a non-issue, which is kind of funny because I was prepared to disclose it and mention it. And so some I have, I even wrote something last week, I was on vacation and I had a client ask me for something that was kind of a rush (laughs) and I offered to do it when I was on vacation I didn't say, oh, I'll use AI and it'll (laughs) save us both time. I just, it was a new topic for me. And when I sent her the draft on Friday, I said, I think I said the same thing I did. You know, I said, I kind of had to lean heavily on AI for this because I'm not familiar with this. Um, And so check it out and see what you think. Yeah. So that kind of a thing. And she, she didn't respond back. She just said, thank you. And you know, thanks for letting me yeah. bug vacation kind of a thing. Yeah. I know with one of my clients, we haven't used it at all in terms of copy or the website. And then another one of my clients, we, I, I made sure to let the sales team know how we felt about it from a brand perspective, from a marketing perspective. So I put something together and worked because we actually have a copywriter on staff. And so I worked with them to make a statement so that way they'd feel comfortable in case somebody asked, do you use AI in your Mm -hmm. business? So that way they could intelligently speak to it because they don't know necessarily what it is. They know it from, you know, probably personal use more so than anything. And I think it's becoming more and more that they're using it just in terms of like wording things like they put their thoughts in there and then just trying to make it sound a little bit more professional because sometimes like for me, I don't know how to word things. Anyway, back to my point, we we came up with this like statement to let people yeah. know what it was that we use it for. And the idea that because we are very much about personalizing the experience that this client uses. So we didn't want them to think that all of a sudden because AI is out there, we are forgetting about that personalization and that one-to-one experience mm-hmm. that they're getting built. It's not being because in the industry, it's actually in the wedding industry there's a lot of talk around tools using AI. And I just don't, I haven't been able to pinpoint companies actually saying what they're using it for. I think that's what's so funny because all the articles so far that I've seen, oh yeah, we're going to use it. Oh yeah, we use it in the in this or that. And these tools, usually the wedding tools or planning tools, it doesn't really, they don't say what they're using it for. And I, that's what I've been struggling with, at least from a marketer perspective, or like trying to, trying to figure out like what exactly it can be used for, um, outside of, cause there's just automation. That's the other side of it too. Like some things are just automated, not AI. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's good to put some thought into what you might say or giving, giving people at that company at kind of an elevator pitch to say. And that was something I was going to suggest that, you know, if you, if someone wants to start using it or is already, but sort of feels like it's uh, something they need to be secretive about, I'm not sure why they would think that, but there's probably still a little bit of that feeling like, wow, this is saving me time. And so I don't know if it's this time saver they'd feel bad about, but for whatever reason, if there's any hesitancy, I would suggest that people kind of write out or plan out what you would say, you know, just your, again, your elevator pitch, like what you talked about, because it would be better to be prepared to say what, how you use it and, and why you use it versus Mm -hmm. getting caught off guard. If someone's worried about that, like I was mentally thinking of different things because I was in discussions with people and some peers and, and we talked about, you know, if it saves you time and you charge by the hour, does that mean that the person gets the discount? Or if someone asks you, oh, are you cheaper now? Because you can do things more quickly. You know, no one's ever asked me that. But I, as I was preparing for our discussion today, I thought, you know, that could happen, right? Because I do mm-hmm. charge a lot of my clients by the hour. That's just how I started doing it early on when I was doing copywriting and marketing work. I came from a corporate world and I I managed a team and I knew everybody's hourly rate. And for some, some reason, I mean, that's just how the company paid, you know, when they hired a person. And so I always had this hourly mindset, but I know some people believe it's better to charge for the job. So let's just say something that took you three hours, took you an hour with AI. And that's not an hour to get an answer back. That's like an hour with the massaging and all the things you do to get high quality content that's aided by AI. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't, 
you know, do I mark up, do I think about, you know, when I am tracking my time for a client, do I think about like, oh, that was an hour, but it was really three in the old days, you know, like a year ago. And so I make it three. I don't, I don't think like that. I, yeah. maybe someone would, but just like when we all started using the internet, you know, and, and regular, you know, the technologies we have, they all saved us time. And I'm not sure how many people at the time were thinking, I need to gross up my time because something's easier because I can find it online versus going to the library. Like we just mm -hmm. didn't do that. So in that regard, these tools were, are going to become so commonplace yeah. that we will not think about the time saving aspect and how I need to charge more for that. I figure I'm a better, smarter marketer, more adept now because I've spent so much time using and learning about AI, reading articles, listening to podcasts, dialing into a couple of big chunky webinars a year ago. Mm -hmm. So my value is higher. And if someone wants to, you know, talk about hourly rate, then I would probably, if I was feeling Andre, I might say, I actually could charge you more because I'm using it in a way that puts me in a different category of marketers now. Mm. Now I wouldn't say that because that's not my vibe. Yeah. I could imagine if someone wants to, you know, get that detailed on, am I charging them less? I'd say, no, I could charge you more. So I don't know. It's just, you know, it, I think it's good for everyone that is using AI or wants to, wants to use it for, for client facing work or in your products and services that you sell. Yeah. Think about, what you might say, but don't feel compelled to bring it up. Mm -hmm. uh, if someone asks you, you know, it's, yeah. I think probably more businesses are using it. And so the, a good conversation starter could just be, hey, are you using AI at all in your XYZ business? I'm finding it to be really helpful. And mm -hmm. then if they say yes or no, you could ask them to tell you more like, oh, why or why not? Are you using it? And then if they turn the question around at me and say, well, are you using it? Are you using it for my stuff? then that's a, a good entree, but I would rather get that car. I would rather probably prompt that conversation myself than have someone spring it on, especially in the early days of when I was using it, you know, a year, about a year ago. I think that was when I started. I, don't, I wasn't the, you know, November, 2022 or whenever it came out, but I've had a lot of experience over there using it. And I've seen what works. I've seen the times where it makes me chuckle because it's sounds like AI or it's off base, but Right. But overall, I love it. And I'm kind of an evangelist for us, if you know, for it in my own little circle of people that I might influence. So, yeah. Is there anything that you absolutely will not use it for? Hmm. Well, I don't take time to put everything I write in there, especially if it is a social media post. I do some social media management for a couple companies. I might, yeah, I, I would probably say I'm not putting every single outbound email that I personally send to a client in there. Now, occasionally if someone asks me a question and I don't want to stop and make my brain work too hard, I might type into AI, give me a short one or two sentence explanation about the importance of, let's say SEO or, you know, or what's an open rate, you know, on email marketing. Like I know, I know these things, but I'm, it's so easy just to type in the query and whether I use it as is or I tweak it, it saves me time and brain power. And I want to have more time for more fun stuff. And so mm -hmm. I know the answers to these questions, but to think about the best way to write it, why not use AI and get it in a, you know, in under a minute versus me typing it out, staring at it. And then, oh, I want to proof it too. So like <laughs> just start with AI. So yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What did we... What else have we not touched on around the use of AI in businesses? Let's see. I'm trying to think. I think most of this, most of the things we've talked about, just you know, how you can open up the conversation with clients and talk to them about it. I I mentioned, you know, I mean, I'm in the world where they say use case all the time, but yeah. I I've mentioned a couple of use cases that that helped me a lot. And I think it's like with any new tool, I'm kind of an early adopter. I've always been like this. You know, I love tools and stuff. I've written articles for my blog, which is very out of date in case anybody goes to my website. <laughs> I, I love talking about tools because I think of myself techie as a techie person. I'm married to a programmer and I have a son who's a programmer and they can humble me really quickly by making when I think I'm techie. But you know, you know how guys are. Anyway, so so 
I just know from my whole period of time being in marketing, which is 20 plus years, probably longer, but that, that I would admit to, but, but I always was one of the people that wanted to learn the new thing. And so for me, it's been fun learning it and, and getting better at it and encouraging others to try it. So if somebody listening to this just hasn't yet tried it, try it for something for work, try it for something personal. I probably use it more for work, but occasionally if I want, uh, you know, want to use AI for something personal, I'll do that. But I would just say, start with something kind of easy, you know, have it spell check something, have it organize something, have it create an outline for a presentation that you want to do. Use it as like a, you know, like it's somebody in your office. If you have a small team, my team is basically me, but I do have a freelancer or two that I work with. But use it like you're talking to someone, you're brainstorming something, or you're stuck on something. For me, you know, it could be stuck on writer's block, or it could be a topic I've talked about a lot for a client. What's a fresh take on XYZ thing? So I just encourage people to use it. And if anything, just see how it saves you time. Like who wants to copy and paste a bunch of bullets in alphabetical order if you just randomly thought of them. Why not put those, put that text into AI and say, reorganize this by um, alphabetically. And then when you look at the list of bullets, you might realize that like two out of seven are super long. So then you can say, you know, and I always thank AI, you know, and say hello or whatever. It's silly, but I've heard a lot of people do that. So I'll say, thanks. This is great. Bullets number two and seven are super long. Reword those to make them shorter so that they are more, they look more organized, you know, as far as the length and it'll do that. Mm -hmm. Now, occasionally not in the instance of the bullets, but sometimes if I get a long paragraph and I want it to be shorter, I'll say it, you know, write it in fewer words or fewer sentences, or I'd say, make it sound more casual. And occasionally it'll shrink it way down, you know? So I've learned that instead of saying, like giving it carte blanche, I guess, to do or just to take my, make it shorter, you know, it'll make it short and then too short. So sometimes when you experiment with it, you can see how like, oh, it overcorrected. So now Mm -hmm. I can say, go back to the original paragraph you gave me, which, you know, I might even say, how many words is that paragraph? And it'll pop out, you know, 97, just like real quickly. And I'll say, give me a version that's closer to like 65 versus Mm -hmm. being so short. So It's, I'm not the first person to say, and I won't be the last person to say, but treat it like, you know, a smart intern, like it has a lot of capabilities, but the more you explain to anyone what you want and get specific, then the more it'll match your request. So AI is just like that. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. I love it. All right. So that was some really great advice you gave at the end, but let me ask you this way. Is there like any one takeaway that you would highly recommend that someone get from this episode if they were listening to it? Well, I would say if you're on the fence about whether it could save you time or that it would do good things for your business, give it a try. If you are in a position like, you know, you and I are where our work or our advice, you know, is given to or content is given to someone else. If you feel like you want to test the waters and ask the person their thoughts on it, because that might change how you do it or the tools you use, then, you know, be ready to bring up the topic and think about what you might say if they have either a positive response or a negative. And I guess the the third thing would be is if you feel like your business needs to disclose it publicly on a website, before you put some paragraph out there about your AI usage, Look into see what your and use AI to ask this if you want and and see what your industry peers are doing. Like if you, you know, your wedding planners or or who else do I have? Like a, a retirement services business is one of my clients. Ask AI or just Google it if you feel more comfortable. Like what are XYZ types of business doing and saying about AI, their AI usage? So if you want to see what your peers are doing, then look into it or ask around, post something on LinkedIn mm-hmm. and, and see what people say. Because I've heard of companies having paragraphs on their website. I have not stumbled across nor looked hard to find that, but I'm sure there are some that say that. So I would more, you know, see what type of business 
I would consider what type of business you have and then see if it's something that you need to disclose. Yeah. I've seen a, a couple websites that do it on their website, but they also do it in their newsletter. They say it right up at the top. There's a, a blurb that they use every time that says it was human generated. I forget the words they use, but it was very clear that they were saying that they were writing the email, not, not AI. Yeah. I've heard it called human in the loop, which cracks me up because oh, it sounds so techy. Yeah. Human in the loop to be able to apply that kind of human aspect to AI usage. Oh. So, yeah. Yeah. I've, I've seen, I, at least I heard one podcast where they were saying that they were sort of watermarking all their images uh, that said created by AI, but they also have an AI podcast. And I think they wanted to um, be upfront that they're using it for that. But like mm -hmm. for the images, I don't know. I, I, I've tried using AI for images with text in them for like mm -hmm. social media posts. And there's so many typos and funny little words that, that don't, you would think if you typed in the query and you said the you wrote the text exactly as it should be, but it's not, it doesn't work out. I saw somebody on LinkedIn posted last week, a funny thing on that on how they got an image that looked really cool, but it had all these typos in it. And that's just what's been happening. But I think if you do an image that doesn't have text in it, you can get some pretty cool stuff from AI. Yeah. It kind of looks, they look all similar in some regards, but yeah. I've experimented with it some, I'm just not a hundred percent happy with the output. Yeah, I haven't gone down that road. I don't like the look of them. I know a yeah, lot of they people all have do. That kind of, yeah. yeah. I don't know what you call it, but fake. they got a they got a, <laughs> what did you say fake? Fake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. Okay, good. And then let's share with the listeners what you do and where they can find you if they had more questions or want to work with you. Okay. The probably the place I'm most active or either Instagram which is Mel Deerdorf. And that's mostly just for fun. I do have, I guess I have Melanie, the marketer. That's my Instagram account that I use for more business. I'm more active on my personal one, but probably the best business place to find me is on LinkedIn. I'm pretty easy to find out there. I think there might be another one or two Melanie Deerdorfs in the world, but I'm in Arizona. So I, I think I have a photo out there of, of uh, Sedona on my profile. And yeah, that's a great place. I love connecting with people and have met a lot of cool people over the years and stay pretty active on LinkedIn. I actually lately kind of re reinstituted something I did a couple of years ago that really helped me a lot. I sent an alarm for every morning be to go on LinkedIn. So I do that about five minutes a day at least. Okay. Is it the same challenge that I did? Oh, not, not that. Yeah. In 2021, I think I did a full fledged challenge where I came up with like well, yeah. it was probably 21, 21 things people could do on LinkedIn, everything mm -hmm. from your profile picture. That was fun. I met a lot of people. I probably had 500 people do that quote contest with me. And that was the year I really doubled down on LinkedIn, probably because it was coming out of the, you know, coming out of the pandemic perhaps, but just like anyone, you get busy and I would rather probably spend time on Instagram than I would LinkedIn, <laughs> but but recently I've been trying to encourage one of my clients employees to use LinkedIn more. And I thought, you know what, I need to walk the talk. So the best thing for yeah. me was just to put a little reminder on my, on my phone at 6 30 AM. I think I said it for, you know, like use LinkedIn. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, so that's a good place for people to find me. Sorry for the long tangent there, but no, that's okay. That's all good. I did. <laughs> I don't know if you still have that challenge out there, even though it's not 2021 anymore. I would encourage people to do that because it was really helpful for me when I was trying to get on LinkedIn. You had a really, a really great grasp of like what different things to do and it made it fun instead of trying to figure out, okay, well, what do I do next? So I'll update it for you and give it to you if you want to link it to the show notes. Yeah. yeah there, there are a couple things, you know, how LinkedIn's features change a lot, right? Like yeah. The, yeah. One of the tips in there, maybe I had it as the bonus. I think I had three or four bonus tips was to do a story on LinkedIn because at the time LinkedIn was experimenting with 24 hour stories. And that was a challenge thing that I put in there, but they stopped using that. So I'll give it a quick look and see if there's anything that is obviously dated. And if you want to share it, that would yeah. be great if people, if they, if, you, if they needed some advice on how the many things you can do on LinkedIn, then that has, you know, almost two dozen. Cool. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing how you're using AI, Melanie. I really appreciate it. So thanks for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.
All right. And that wraps up this episode. Stay tuned for more episodes to help your business thrive online. We'll see you in the next sweet spot. Cheers. Thank you for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you're looking for SEO and content marketing help, you can find all kinds of information at compassdigitalstrategies.com. And if you like the episode, please tell a friend. Cheers.